the media has done a very good job at striking fear and paranoia in a lot of people. How's it impacted on me? Terrible, because my gym's still shut. We are still seeing the number of cases increasing. First question people ask is, you know, well, who's telling you not to go back? It's now six weeks since we left. There's just not that many people around. This is usually one of the busiest areas in the city. I wouldn't be surprised if I got quarantined. Temperature screenings are taking place uh, around large malls. Multiple entrances are blocked off. There was some QR check-in security measure that I don't really understand exactly what it was just because it was completely in Chinese. I actually gave up on it after a while. The cops came knocking on my door. School has banned us from traveling outside of the country because of threats of quarantine from the government. So, yeah. Expats everywhere here, and today we're talking about the coronavirus. We've interviewed expats living in different parts of the world most affected by the coronavirus, and we've asked them how it's affected them professionally and personally. Here's what they have to say. Hey YouTube, hi Facebook, hi Instagram, whatever social media uh, avenue you guys are watching this message. Hi, my name is Joe Cope. I am an American expat living in North Italy. I live in Monza, which is just outside of Milan in the region of Lombardy. Um, we're actually just north of the city of Lodi, which is kind of the epicenter of this European coronavirus outbreak. Hello, expats everywhere. My name's Darren. I live in a little beach town called Tropea in the south of Calabria. Hi, I'm Lisa Silverman from Italy. Um, I'm currently living and working in China, which is amazing. Uh, as you know, I'm teaching in China now, and uh, I'm actually in a city called Dongguan, which is set in between Guangzhou and Shenzhen, which is, I'm about an hour and a half outside of Hong Kong. Hi, guys. I'm a PE teacher uh, in South China. I've been there a year already. This was my second year. My name's Jake. I'm located here in Busan, in Korea. Just to give you a little bit of backstory, I'm in Myanmar. Hello, my name is Trisha, and I currently live in Singapore. Hey, expats. Travel and Trev here. Some of you might know me from the City Sprint videos and a couple other expats everywhere videos. Uh, I'm currently living in the UAE. There are a lot of things that are still trying to operate as usual. Um, for instance, I'm a teacher and coordinator at an international school here in Monza, and so we've been required to remain closed for the past couple of weeks, going into our third week now. Uh, but we've been offering a virtual school essentially since day two of the closure. Uh, so we've been trying to maintain business as usual as much as we can, along with a lot of other companies here in the area. It's been a very popular hashtag recently, the hashtag smart working. A lot of people working virtually from home just to maintain business uh, and keep things going as much as possible uh, while still uh, remaining at home. Basically, for the last two weeks, my life has changed completely. I don't go to work at all now. And the second semester had, had not yet started, and going into it, we received word that we'd be teaching online. And since then, I've been teaching online, and we're going into our sixth week. I've been affected both personally and professionally. Uh, we found out on Wednesday that our spring break was going to start this weekend. So they've moved up our spring break about two weeks for the um, this because they're shutting down the schools for four weeks. Once our spring break is over, so after two weeks of not traveling, we will be in two weeks of home-based learning. So we have to make video lessons and online activities for our students for two weeks after spring break, um, which I guess we'll be preparing those during our spring break since we can't go anywhere. We rely heavily on tourism, and right now the tourism industry has gotten hit really hard, and the season has, hasn't even started. Thousands of uh, reservations have already been canceled throughout hotels, B&Bs, resorts, everything's been canceled. The media has done a very good job at striking fear and paranoia in a lot of people, and unfortunately it's affected us heavily. And in the governments also have been um, placing bans, restrictions on us, on flights coming here. Even the transport in the country has, uh, it, 
it's, uh, it's being canceled within the country. I teach at an international school and uh, as a teacher, we just kind of notice small little interruptions, um, but it's not too bad. Uh, we have staff and student temperatures taken uh, about three times throughout the day, uh, but it flows pretty smoothly and doesn't create too much uh, interruption in the classroom. Visitors are quite limited coming onto school campus. Uh, a lot of our large events and activities, large gatherings have been canceled, and this is quite common for all international schools and I think even local schools as well. With the current epidemic that's that hitting the world at the moment, uh, I haven't returned. Neither have a lot of my colleagues right now. I'm an international educator. I've been doing it for 10 years. And even with the school that I work at right now, they are talking about suspending our in-class lessons and transitioning into online teaching for probably a period of several weeks until this like hysteria just kind of calms down a little bit and people can kind of figure out like the um, reasonable threat that it actually is. So, Since the 10th of February, I've been working from home. It's been really strange here for the past few weeks because there's been a government ordered mandate of certain types of closures, uh, mostly things related to school and business meetings that involve a lot of people coming together in the same place. Uh, there's also been an order for certain types of restaurants and bars to close where people would be too close in proximity to one another. On that serious message back, how's it impacted on me? Terrible, because my gym's still shut. So it's been shut, um, it was meant to open after Chinese New Year. So that still would have been, I don't know, about a month of closure anyway. And um, just at the moment, we're still waiting for clearance on from the government on when our lives can return to normal. You know, still able to do normal things like go to the supermarket and grocery shop and uh, life continues as normal. It's just all the things that I like to do that are really, really important are shut. So my workplace is currently shut and uh, my gym is shut and my coffee shop is shut. This coronavirus and the way that it's impacting my life as an expat, what it's been like for me in the past couple of weeks, especially this past week, I feel like this past week has been a little bit um, heightened with the hysteria. And for me, I had a lot of travel plans in the next couple of weeks. There was one I had in April, and I wanted to go to uh, Thailand, but one of my buddies who resides in Hong Kong at the moment was going to come with me. And the Thai government decided that Hong Kong residents are completely banned, with no exceptions, in addition to mainland China. Um, and, you know, that threw... Just, just threw us for a loop, but we had to come up with alternative plans for that. So I came from a friend's house last week from up in France, and I had to go through the north down to the south, and my bus had nobody on it. So a lot of stuff is getting canceled, and uh, it, it's. I understand that it's a serious issue, but uh, I feel like some of these things have, have been blown a little bit out of proportion. Temperature screenings are taking place uh, around large malls. Um, some of the larger common malls, their um, uh, multiple entrances are blocked off and you just kind of have to filter through, you know, kind of a one line system so that uh, your body temperature is checked just through screening. So they don't actually do the temperature check to the forehead. Uh, but a lot of um, like smaller businesses or organizations, if you enter, your temperature is checked as well. I left China on January 18th with my girlfriend. We went to Bali. Uh, the plan was to stay in Bali for 10 days and then return back to China. As things developed with the, the coronavirus, things changed. The situation in Wuhan was just increasing and um, we couldn't go back. On another more personal note, my fiance who lives in Singapore has been told by the Ministry of Education that if she comes into the country, she will be placed in 28 day quarantine. So, yeah. I was on vacation uh, in Cambodia and this coronavirus thing started to spark up. And when I returned, it had started to become a little more well-known, at least back home and globally and in China and whatnot. And some of the measures, safety measures had started to be put in place. So when I, when I flew back, 
for example, they had asked anyone who had been through Hubei province, they had to go through some quarantine measures. Uh, but I was stuck on the plane for about two and a half hours out on the tarmac. And then after that, uh, things started to get a little bit more widely known. The worst part of everything was being inside all the time. Wake up in the morning, teach classes in the apartment, uh, and you kind of stay in the apartment all the time. It was really boring. It was uh, definitely uh, a stir-crazy kind of thing after a while. Still is. Everything around me, a lot of smaller businesses are closed. So, you know, going to a cafe, going to a small restaurant or something like that is impossible. Um, so hopefully that will take hold soon. We are still seeing the number of cases increasing. Um, hopefully that will slow and then start to decrease. Um, unfortunately, there have been a lot of people affected here uh, and not just here. I've seen some cases in the United States too. Most businesses have signs on their doors saying, you cannot come in without a mask. That's a little bit of a sort of contradiction though, because it's almost impossible to buy masks anywhere at the moment. There are some, the government has arranged some places you can buy them at the post office and some banks. A lot of people that I know are not working. Anyone who has a private language school or a business like that is having a lot of trouble and small businesses are having a lot of trouble as well. So it has changed our day-to-day -day life a lot. There's just not that many people around. This is usually one of the busiest areas in the city. So yeah, let's have a look and we'll see what else we can see along this tour. Okay, I'm just coming up toward a pharmacy now and we can see a sign on the door that says, of course, that they are sold out of safety masks. And that's the case basically everywhere. The government has arranged that people can go to post offices and certain banks and buy a limited number of masks on particular days of the week depending on their birth year. Also even repatriation if that were to happen even not not even necessarily repatriation but if I just wanted to visit the United States even as a citizen I think I'm going to send some red flags to the immigration officials and potentially get pulled out of the line and get quarantined for a period of 14 days or more. Just to give you a little bit of backstory, I'm in Myanmar now, which um, has not, I, I've heard through the grapevine that there are four reported cases of coronavirus that I don't think has been posted on any of the websites that international organizations consider to be credible. It's not on CDC, it's not on WHO. I wouldn't be surprised if I got quarantined. Self-quarantine is what they're saying now. That's 14 days of you basically sitting in your home or the residence that you listed on your application and only getting permission to leave through a respected official. Here, the, the virus hasn't, it hasn't hit and I hope it doesn't. Um, everyone here is business as usual. You know, I'm doing the, uh, the traditional uh, um, greetings of the shaking of the hands and the kissing of the cheeks. And, but people are taking extra precaution and washing their hands. People who deal with a lot of people on a daily basis, sometimes you'll see them wearing uh, latex gloves. But as far as, uh, as, far as that goes, everything, uh, everything's in the clear around here. Um, authorities are demanding anybody that has come from the north to the south stay in their homes for two weeks quarantined. This is based on a trust because they can't really regulate everyone. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, life isn't too different here. Uh, there's just a couple of extra measures that are put into place to make sure that everyone is um, healthy and trying to keep the virus under control. We still don't know uh, a starting date that we can return. Uh, the school that I work at is a fantastic school. I had a great first year there. Um, my second year has been exciting as well. But at the moment, the province that we live in, they they can't give us a, well. They can't give anyone a, a starting date. So without having a starting date, a lot of international teachers have, have decided to stay overseas. Uh, most of them here in in, uh, in Southeast Asia. The coronavirus has not been kind to us. Um, or I should say the government has not been kind to us on behalf of the coronavirus. As of today, March 6th, we've only had, I think, around 30 to 40 cases of corona here in the country. Uh, but the government is still taking no chances. 
there isn't this huge influx of people coming in and out uh, that might be carriers of this virus. So things never really got out of hand in Don Juan. Nevertheless, they still uh, implemented all these safety measures. So I live in a big apartment complex. You can't leave or come back without getting your temperature checked. Uh, there was some QR check-in um, security measure that I don't really understand exactly what it was just because it was completely in Chinese. I actually gave up on it after a while because, and the cops came look, knocking on my door uh, to make sure that I filled it out. <clears throat> and you have to show that every time you come in the gate. And you also have to check in with the cops um, just to let them know that you are here in this city, uh, that you're not traveling around and whatnot. So the current situation, uh, at least with the limited information that I have, the small number of infections that were in Dongguan uh, are, are going away rapidly. For the, the information that's out there, it seems that I believe China has things under wraps, and I think it's just a healing process now. Uh, there's a very small number of infections that are new uh, each day. Um, I've got to say, the Italians have been very resilient. Everybody's very positive. There are still people that get out and about. In fact, it's a beautiful day today, and my wife and I are going to the park just to enjoy some time outside, take care of our mental and, and physical well-being um, since we've been closed up in the house, house, both working from home recently. On the plus side of things, uh, we've been teaching online now for four weeks. I've been teaching PE online. so. Like everything in life, everything's a challenge. Uh, we went into this new form of, of teaching with no practice and no training. Uh, that was four weeks ago. Our whole PE department are all using this online software called Zoom. Our ideas for teaching PE have become more wide. We've, we've uh, expanded how we're going to do this. But on the other hand, um, it is nice to see that the government is taking coronavirus seriously and hopefully all these uh, very strict restrictions will help this thing blow over quickly. It's really important, and and we're really focusing on this. They've been they've been really expressing this a lot um, in the media here, uh, and in the media everywhere. It's really important to maintain uh, good personal hygiene, washing the hands often, um, coughing or sneezing or something like that into a tissue or into the elbow and not into the hands. Um, so everybody's very aware and, and doing what we can to prevent the spread of this thing. Fortunately, the World Health Organization director put out. A press release to this effect that the overreaction around the globe has been completely out of proportion to the actual risk. So let's just put the big thing out. Um, I'm tired of hearing all of the conspiracy theories and the hysteria around this one. Go to primary sources of information like the World Health Organization, listen to medical experts and get your facts, please. Um, social media has a lot to answer for in this current age of unwarranted hysteria, and that is the world's words of the director of the World Health Organization. Now, first question people ask is, you know, who is telling you not to go back? My first step is always looking at the FCU, the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in the UK. What was their advice? The advice was, do not go back to China. Um, leave China uh, apart from all essential travel into China. Um, so we decided, right, you know what? If they're saying that, we don't go back. Uh, it's now six weeks since we left. Anyone who's been affected by this, friends or loved ones of those affected, we really uh, send our best wishes for a full recovery. And those of us unaffected, hope that you can remain well and stay well. Uh, let's take care of each other and let's get past this thing. Yeah, I just wish that uh, there wasn't so much hysteria and misinformation out, you know, outside on this one and uh, the levels of racism have been really really disappointing so i'm so glad that i'm here in china with the chinese Jiao wuhan Jiao. so i don't know i just wanted to give my two bits or my two pieces in a biscuit of that information about what has been going on for me it's different for everybody and i think we all just need to take a moment and pause and have an honest conversation about the reality of what may or may not happen to us with this with this virus and i'll let each individual determine you know how they feel about it you guys all take care have a good day bye
I'm hoping for the best. So uh, I hope you guys are all doing well in the expats everywhere universe. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Anyway, coronavirus. Before you know it, we'll, we'll be talking about it like it like it never happened.